Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and this is your digital rebar install video. If you haven't done anything else, this is the place to start because we are gonna install digital rebar on your desktop. Linux, Mac, it could be a VM running Linux, it could be a Raspberry Pi, that's Edge Lab, so follow those instructions. It could be a cloud system, we have instructions for that too. This is the desktop install, and we're just gonna do a really simple, basic install all the way through to using VirtualBox to actually install Linux and uh, we're going to CentOS and Ubuntu on the systems without internet connectivity. So it's a lot to be done in about 30 minutes. So hang on and we're going to walk through all the steps. Uh, we're starting from portal.rackend.io, uh, which is the Rackend UX. In this case, if you bring it up, like just go to the site, it's going to bring you the quick start guide. And that's what we're going to be following here. Uh, you could also go to provision.readthedocs.io uh, and follow our more complex guides and read about the background and things like that, and we strongly recommend doing that. Of course, it's always important to understand Digital Rebar is a behind-the-firewall software application. We are not a SaaS. We're not connecting to you or penetrating your firewall or forcing you to loop in through our servers at all. Everything you're doing is running behind your firewall. It's in, in your systems, we are not connecting to it. Your browser or the CLI will provide a bridge to download content into the system and, and get started, like ISOs or content packs or plugins. All those components are actually pulled into your systems. Everything is running completely behind your firewall. Uh, and that's the way we prefer to operate it. Our goal is to make you a successful operator and be self-sufficient, not to try to create a dependency on an external service. So with that in mind, let's get rolling. So over here, uh, we're gonna need to create a digital rebar directory, which is great. I'm gonna skip around a little bit because I, I do wanna show you some important things and considerations in the install process as we go. Uh, so we're gonna skip over that direct curl bash. And I'm gonna actually download the install script as a individual step. Once again, straight out of the documentation I need to make it executable, so let's do that. And then once I have it, what I can do is I can actually check out the install um, and ask for help. When I do that, you will see there are lots and lots of options. Now, this is a simple install. We're not going to take advantage of like systemd or bootstrapping processes or running in a container, just trying to keep it simple. But I want to point out just how much we have available for you to control and manage uh, digital rebar installs because it's an enterprise tool um, with upgrade and uh, deletions and, and just tremendous uh, different choices and, and ways that you can install it. But let's keep to the basics for this one. So for here, we're gonna run it install. We're gonna tell it to install. We do wanna provide a version. So I'm gonna use the latest version, which is tip. Stable is the last release, or you can pick a specific version and I'm going to tell it to run isolated. And that's it. Uh, isolated means I'm running it as a process locally. I'm not installing it in system D, so it will not survive a reboot. Um, super handy for a quick test. Uh, I run that all the time from a development mode, and that way I can actually watch output and things like that. While we're waiting for it to download the zip file, um, I'm going to prep VirtualBox just a little bit. So what I have going here is just standard VirtualBox. Do want to make sure I have a host network going? In this case, I have VBox uh, Net Zero, which is a host network. We're going to use that for Pixie Boot and install. And to do that, I'm dis I've disabled the DHCP server. Um, so once you've created this network, that's the primary one we're going to need when we start doing VirtualBox. Uh, getting down into the system a little further. And in just that little bit of time, I've been able to download the zip file with all the digital rebar components. It hasn't started it for me. So I do need to take that additional step, which is telling me to do right here. And uh, all that's doing is starting the DRP, digital rebar provision server in my local directory. I'm gonna get a log output, but otherwise background the process. So that looks great. And now I have digital rebar running in the background. We can actually log into it, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So here, it's going to default to my local address with 8092. That's Digital Rebar's uh, port. And here, it's uh, presenting with a login screen. But it's also telling me I'm not connected because I have a TLS exception. That's perfectly normal. 
uh, what what that is caused by is the fact that uh, we use secure protocols we had to create a self-signed certificate with digital rebar and so you need to authorize that certificate in your browser so I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge that I can come in um, password is rocket skates and rocket skates r zero c k e t s k eight t e s so once I log in I'm going to get my uh, EULA pretty straightforward stuff and now I am running in the system and you'll see it's taken us to this info and preferences screen and in this screen what I have is um, basically a checklist of things to do to get started and not very far along in the process so let's do a couple things the first one I want to do is actually install my SSH key I have my keys over here I can just find my my public key drop it right in here and submit it super handy from that perspective now anytime I provision it's going to include my keys in that so I could log in to either the discovery OS which we call sledgehammer or any machine I provision after the fact so always a handy thing to do um, I could also come in and install and add, uh, add my licenses for this demo you don't have to register um, but for other demos you will there's a lot of advanced features uh, to take advantage of uh, from that perspective so we are well on our way let's check into what we need to do uh, let's start with we're going to just keep the password default that's super handy but i do want to add in my uh, base automation which is uh, my task library so task library has some additional uh, controls and commands uh, super handy to have since i installed tip i am choosing the latest version so one thing you'll notice about our infrastructure is code catalog is that we version everything and so you actually can go forwards or backwards in versions you can pick up uh, latest version you can upload your own uh, completely using the CLI we actually have command lines that do exactly this process but it went out to the internet it pulled down that content pack and then it uploaded it to digital rebar so catalog UX endpoint uh, the endpoint did not go out and ask for that and we didn't push directly to the endpoint everything's bridged using uh, cross-origin to your endpoint through the browser. So from here, back to our checklist, next thing we need to do is we need some ISOs. Uh, that's actually the next step in the command line instructions over here, where it's telling me, hey, I want to do a upload uh, for Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer is our discovery OS. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, Uh, and in this case, what it's doing is it's going to the catalog from the command line, downloading that ISO and uploading it back into Digital Rebar. Uh, and it's doing it based on the location set in the bootm. So while we wait for that to occur, I can go into boot environments. And if I find Sledgehammer over here, this is actually the Sledgehammer image. This is the location it's being downloaded from. Um, and in the background, it's actually um, pulling those things in. We work really hard on Sledgehammer, it's based on CentOS, uh, to make it incredibly lightweight and hyper, hyper op optimized for boot provisioning. So it loads very quickly in memory, um, it's very stable, it works on systems where constantly um, you know, making sure that, that it is robust and rugged for all environments is really your fallback operating system in a lot of cases. And since it doesn't install in disk, it is all in memory, um, it's pretty resilient. We've been using um, a variation of Sledgehammer for almost 10 years. So it has completed that process. I'm going to go ahead and set the preferences here. Uh, I'll show you exactly where that gets set. And then the next things on our instructions are uh, to upload Ubuntu and CentOS ISOs. Instead of doing that, I'm going to do one of them. I've already downloaded them. So um, what I can do here, instead of uh, dragging them through, I can actually say uh, ISOs upload and I have them stored over in my ISOs directory. So if I say CentOS, that's not the one I want. That's for image deploy, CentOS 8. It looks great. Two, and we're gonna install to the same name. Uh, and so this is me pulling down a, a CentOS ISO. Or actually, I have an ISO, I'm just uploading it. If I did the same thing through the UX, let me show you what that would look like. So over here, I can go to ISOs. And so you can see CentOS is already uploading. Uh, I have over 
here. I have some ISOs for Ubuntu, so I'm going to go ahead and upload those. I can literally just drag in that Ubuntu ISO. Looks good. Say upload, and it's going to go through the process. If you're wondering how I knew where to get those, um, they are just part of the boot env instructions. So if I go over into boot environments here and uh, check out Ubuntu 18.04, it inside of this, it's actually providing, just told me it finished doing the upload, um, it's actually providing the locations where those goes. But you could pull that location from anywhere. So if you have your own version or distro, you can provide it in the ISOs and make that go. We have people in community who are build, build their own bootems and tweak and tune because uh, the bootems provide all the pre-seed and uh, post uh, kickstart type instructions and processes. Okay, so let's check in on where we are. We're down. Now we just need to provide a subnet. So I click over here, it takes me into subnets. I'm going to go ahead and add a subnet and I want to do VirtualBox. So it's already showing me this VirtualBox subnet. Sometimes you don't see this VirtualBox subnet. Uh, if you don't see that VirtualBox subnet, uh, you need to just create a VM, turn it on, and then VirtualBox will show you, will, will provide the subnet for us to discover. Um, doesn't, does, that subnet doesn't exist until VirtualBox has um, created a machine with it. So my machine's already warmed up, so it's, I've got that uh, existing. And all the defaults that we, we choose here are great, um, and you can just run with that, right? There's got a good DHCP range, the next boot files, and all those things are set. So I'm just going to hit Add. I don't have to think about it a lot. I'm also going to turn on uh, the uh, eventing so I can actually watch and see what's happening. So everything that happens in Digital Rebar generates a WebSocket event. You can subscribe to that event. The UX does. It's how it provides live updates for you. Uh, and so I am ready now. I've gotten, let me see see my wizard here looks like I've gotten pretty much everything except creating machines uh, ready to go so let's create some machines in VirtualBox I'm gonna jump over to the machines view here and if I want to create machines very straightforward I can go to machines new uh, let's see machine 01 not very creative but it'll get the job done uh, and I want a Linux machine in this case Great. Uh, I do want enough RAM to make this system uh, workable. So uh, two gigs would be the minimum. Four gigs is what I'd recommend. Uh, and I just need a standard virtual disk. So I don't want it too small. It's going to default to 12 for me. That's great. Uh, can go ahead and create it. I'm not quite ready to boot the machine yet. There are two tweaks I need to make. Uh, the first is I need to uh, tell it to network boot. It doesn't do that by default and I don't need floppy or optical. So I'm going to network boot has to be the priority. That's great. And then for networking, I need to switch it to the host only VirtualBox Zero network. This is the internal network we're going to use for provisioning. And I'm going to go ahead and set up a NAT network. So um, this isn't going to happen by default, but I could then attach these machines to the to the internet at, on, its sec on that second interface. So now this machine's ready to go, and then I'm going to clone it. Uh, so I have a second one, machine two, that looks great, good. And if I go ahead and turn this machine on, this looks good, I don't need any additional media. I'm going to go and I'm going to tell it to be always on top so we can watch it boot over here and I'm going to power up the second machine. And what you'll notice, uh, although it happened very quickly, is the systems went straight through Sledgehammer. So um, you can see uh, the leases stacking up in the bottom. Uh, it actually got the Sledgehammer images and it started booting Sledgehammer. Um, no additional configuration or steps were required by me. Um, it was all the way through. It's already in Sledgehammer and running. Uh, and now I will be able to control it. Once it creates the machine, you'll see it poke in through the API and the refresh button will turn green to tell me I have a new machine ready. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. At this point, Digital Rebar is installed. I have machines that I can control and install. I've already installed CentOS and Ubuntu, and next we are about to actually use those to install in the operating system. Um, one thing that's worth noting before I, I jump into that step 
is I can come into this machine. We'll take uh, the 5610. And I could SSH into root at 5610. Remember, I've done this a couple times before. Uh, remember that um, I added my key, which means that SSH is installing my public key already. So I am set to log into these machines uh, with no additional steps required. It's super handy from that perspective. So this is looking really good and I'm about ready to install um, CentOS and Ubuntu. Uh, and I haven't had to do anything except do some base configurations, right? Machines booted, they got came in, they got discovered. If I jump into this machine and move these out of the way a little bit, what you'll see is we've actually collected a, a lot of data. If you go through our Go High, um, collect a huge amount of information about the system and how it's provisioned, and then you can use that for downstream automation. That's another video. I'm trying to keep this one fast and simple. But before I do this, I do need to go into my global profile and set uh, a couple of values. Uh, because these systems don't have connections to the internet, when I install them, they can't go out and pull in all the packages that the operating system vendors assume that you're, they're going to be able to pull in from the internet. So I have to turn that off. Um, so for that, I need to tell it my package repositories are empty, so it doesn't try to go out and get any. And I'm also going to tell it um, to use local repo. So there we go. That sounds great. So I've now set uh, values that will allow me to uh, not go to the internet for those installs. Um, and since they're not connected to the internet, that is a requirement. Otherwise the installs will hang and you'll get an obvious, oh, I can't talk to the internet in the middle of these installs. So to actually run the install process, you have to use a workflow. Workflows are essential to how Digital Rebar operates. Everything we do centers around this idea of chained automation uh, to configure a machine. In this case, uh, we defaulted to Discover Base, so a machine we didn't know, we put through this Discover Base workflow, which inventoried it and installed Sledgehammer. But if I want to install CentOS, we have a workflow for CentOS. That workflow basically does the kickstart, but then it'll install Digital Rebar as an agent and post provision that includes things like adding your keys and then I could extend this workflow um, to do additional inventory steps, RAID BIOS configuration, operating, you know, uh, con you know adding additional credentials or applications or things like that. We, we extend these workflows in all sorts of ways. Out of the box you get a couple of very basic ones so that you have something to play with without having to learn anything else about the system. So let's start CentOS Space. You'll notice this is machine two, so it's already started. I didn't have to touch, I didn't need out-of-band management, it just started the process by itself. And let me do the same on the top one. So over here we are going to pick Ubuntu Base and it starts its process and in going through. Uh, and that's it. We've now started down the process of getting these two operating systems installed. I'm going to let them progress a little little ways so that you can actually see the purple screen for uh, Ubuntu to know it's installing. And over here you can actually see some of the CentOS uh, language scrolling through. Uh, that's, that's about it. We're going to have these machines stall. I'm going to tour you a little bit through Digital Rebar while we wait for the installations to complete. Um, there'll be a reboot and then they will they will start for us. Uh, and I'm going to leave them scrolling a little bit in the background so you can at least see progress uh, on screen. So uh, the other things to show you here, um, now that we've completed all of our checks, I uh, do, do recommend uh, creating a license. It's not required for this demo, obviously. But uh, the trial license does unlock things like our pooling and context features and getting more than 10 machines in a system. Um, uh, and it's just part of the, the trial process. So we, we strongly recommend you do that. Um, Multi-site manager is the uh, really advanced enterprise features. Of course, subnets we took you through creating. You can see the leases that were created, reservations if you need them. Uh, boot environments are really what define how operating systems are installed. Uh, pretty complex stuff, but always worth sort of checking out what we're doing behind the scenes. Um, and then the workflows components themselves uh, are our core 
operating system constructs. So if you look at something like CentOS um, 8, actually let's do this. Let's pick something a little bit more exciting uh, for us to look at. I'm going to go ahead uh, in our Edge Lab install. I'm going to go ahead and choose that install. Once again, I'm, I'm in tips, so I'm going to keep picking the latest uh, install components. That looks great. But if I go into workflows now, I have a couple of new workflows. Um, the one I'm looking for here is a K3S install because it has a couple extra steps. And when I look at that, you can see I've got some generic cluster setup features, K3S install, dash edit, installing the Kubernetes dashboard, and running Helm. If I drill into here, that one's not so interesting. Uh, cluster setup, maybe. No, these have just these stage. These stages just have one task. Sometimes our stages have multiple tasks. Um, and then from there, you can actually see exactly what's going to happen. There's documentation, um, tells you if parameters are required, um, and all those components. And then any of those things actually then include, uh, when they run, they're going to create jobs. The jobs are going to get logged. We have a lot of videos that go into a lot more detail about this and show you how jobs are run and things like that. Installing operating systems doesn't require a lot of job activity. It really is mostly boot env and, and boot material activity. So these logs aren't as exciting, um, but they are really uh, important components because as Digital Rebar does work, you get live status back and you get to watch things uh, run. We work really hard to be transparent in how things operate. So you always see the gears turning, make it easy to troubleshoot. Um, speaking of troubleshooting, one thing to look at that's interesting is in the info and preferences, I'm going to have to move these out of the way. Um, if you're trying to diagnose the system, one thing to do is look at the logging levels. Um, and we'll often recommend people uh, boost logging levels if they're having trouble diagnosing things. In some cases, if you get all the way into debug and trace, you're almost getting um, uh, a Wireshark type uh, log events out of the DHCP. Do not leave them there. That's a lot of data. You'll overwhelm the logs. And if you're looking for where the errors go, um, you can actually visit the log log uh, thing and see what's going on. So from that perspective, you can see exactly what the system is uh, seeing to do. In this case, it's telling you, yeah, I can't do secure bootloaders. Um, it's this enterprise feature, which is fine. We don't, don't need it for this. Uh, so it just fell back and used our insecure bootloaders by default. Um, so that's a pretty good sense. If I did want to change the password, I would do that by clicking over here, rocket skates, and changing the password for that, that user. A whole bunch of functionality to check out uh, from that perspective. So I'm going to pause the tour uh, for a moment and let these finish. And I will check in with you after they've completed the install. So we're at a point where uh, the installs are just completing. And uh, in this case, you can see it's doing, doing its, its final closing up reboot. And that means Digital Rebar is actually aware of what's going on. Uh, in this case, it's showing that second uh, machine, the Ubuntu base, is already complete. It got green checks all the way through, and CentOS base just finished. So it moved all the way into complete for those, uh, thing, those uh, options. Let me see if I can arrange over here. Uh, and so at this point, I've now completed my install for those two. If I come back, and SSHN again, it'll tell me, wait a second, your <laughs> system is not what I thought it was, which is right. Um, and if I log back in over here, I am now in, uh, this one looks like the Ubuntu machine. So it's changed now from Sledgehammer into Ubuntu, which is excellent. And I've completed that install. Uh, once again, super fast. So it doesn't, you know, the goal here is to keep things very easy for you so that you don't have to worry about um, how these things operate. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead. I'm done with these machines. I want to go back to Sledgehammer and, and re reformat them, recondition them, reinstall. So I can do that simply by starting, I have both checked, I'm going to put them in discover base. Um, they immediately pick up the, I don't have to go in and reboot them or reset uh, agents running on them. It knows what to do and it's just going through and reinstalling uh, back to Sledgehammer. And so I can go and um, 
reset the machines and go through another cycle. It's actually a very common thing for operators to do with digital rebar is uh, we've made it so easy to reset and recycle machines so that you can do uh, reinstall events over and over and over again, uh, which is important. So instead of configuring a system and adjusting and tweaking it, it's so fast to do a full system reset you can start from scratch every single time you want to do an install and, and that's a big benefit of doing this type of, of cloud native type of provisioning even on bare metal. Please uh, come and check us out. Join our Slack community. If you go to Racken.com you can join our Slack community or you can talk to us through the inbox and the app. Um, we really do like to interact with operators and hear what you're doing and if you have questions um, or you know want to understand the product better please, please check things out. Um, we've done a lot of work on documentation. We have a fun um, training for people who want to build their own content, which is really the next step out of this, which is called Color Demo. They'll teach you how to set the icons on the machines, but in the way that we prefer to do it, which means building a content pack and your own workflows and stages and, and all that stuff. It's not very mysterious. It's just uh, YAML and some code. So check that out too. It's a great way to learn more about digital rebar. Thank you.